Hello YouTube, this is going to be a tutorial on how to fully disassemble and assemble an Xbox 360 controller. I'm going to be going over every single aspect of the controller so that if any videos require you to disassemble it and then reassemble it, you'll be able to do that regardless of which part the video asks you to do. So before we start, we need to know what tools we're going to need for this project. The first thing we're going to need is a T8 screwdriver or a T9 screwdriver. Now these are the Torx bolts on the two and they both have holes in them. They both have the tamper proof hole, the security hole, whatever you want to call it and they're both designed to unscrew screws that have those little pegs sticking out which the Xbox controllers do which are basically designed to keep you from opening it. Um, the problem with the um, Torx bolts you may find in your local hardware shop, like this one for example, is that the base right here is too fat. So when you go to these um, deeper holes right here, it won't be able to reach all the way in. Now, that's not a problem. You can get around this by either one, um, taking a Dremel and sanding this down until it's nice and thin, or two, you can do what I've done on this controller and you can actually bore out some of the hole so that it actually sinks all the way into the bottom. All you have to do for that is get a screwdriver and wiggle it kind of around in a circle so that the plastic scrapes off making the hole bigger and large enough for the Torx bolt to fit all the way in or bit the Torx bit. <clears throat> now you may notice that I said a T9 or a T8. The T9 fits perfectly in the screw and gives almost no wiggle whatsoever. Almost no wiggle. The T8 fits in there just nicely, but it gives a little bit more wiggle. So really, the T9 and the T8 are almost identical in size. One's just slightly bigger than the other. So I really don't think it matters which one. If you want to be safe, go ahead and go with the T8 bolt, just in case, because it's a little bit smaller, and you won't run the risk of maybe getting it a tad bit too big, like you might with the T9. This screwdriver right here, I got off of Amazon.com, and I'll put a link in the description box. This screwdriver is specially made for the Xbox 360. It has the T8 bit with the security hole and it is extended and very narrow so that when you fit it into these deeper holes it reaches without a problem. It comes with a little grip here which is nice and it comes with a circular ball that kind of free floats on it so you're able to turn the screwdriver while still maintaining control by kind of pinching it in between the flesh of your thumb and your other fingers, which makes unscrewing it nice and fast because you don't have to let go and reset your hand every time. You can just do like that and it comes off very easily. Um, it also has a slight magnetized um, tip, so it doesn't necessarily pick up the screwdrivers like a really heavy duty magnetized tip would, but it does help keep it from falling off every once in a while. So out of the two options, whether you go and buy, you know, just a little bit like this, whether it's a T8 or a T9, or you buy the screwdriver, I'd recommend buying the screwdriver made for the Xbox 360. Um, this one I got for about $2.50, and the shipping, uh, I believe it was free. Um, so this didn't cost me any more than $3. If the shipping wasn't free, I, I uh, you know, the price was somewhere between $3, and that's not really a big deal. And it shipped within maybe three, four days. So shipping was good on this one. I would definitely recommend getting this. Um, you won't have to, you know, worry about those deep holes or, you know, sanding this little bit down. Although it does work. I, I bought this one first because I thought it would work. Turns out it doesn't all the way. I kind of ghetto rigged it on a different controller. But, you know, this one is really the way to go. Um, so now that we know that tool, let's go and look over some of the other tools. Um, for the D-pad, you're going to need a larger screwdriver and possibly a smaller screwdriver. And we'll get to that more in detail when we get to the actual D-pad. Other than that, those are all the tools that you're going to need to disassemble and reassemble the Xbox 360 controller. So now that we know the tools, let's go ahead and start disassembling it. We're going to take the controller, flip it on the back, and you're going to notice that there's seven screws. There's three on the left side. One, two, three three on the right side, one, two, three, and one in the center. You won't be able to see this screw if you haven't disassembled your controller before because there will be a label or a barcode that is right there. All you have to do, you get your fingernail in there, peel off the barcode, 
and there will be the screw. So now all we have to do is use our little screwdriver and start unscrewing it. Now taking off the middle screws last. And what we're going to do after we take out this middle screw is we're going to keep the buttons facing downward. Actually, got to get that screw out. There we go. So now we have all of our screws out. Let's kind of put these off to the side so we don't lose them. And there we go. Now what we're going to do <clears throat> is we're going to pinch from the bottom. Get your fingernail underneath the sides like so. And what we're going to do is we're going to lift upwards. What that's going to do is it's going to keep you from messing up the, the triggers and it's going to release the tension on the spring right there. And you're going to kind of peel up. Again, if we went backwards, we might get snagged on the triggers here. So go from the bottom to the top. And there's the back shell for the Xbox 360 controller. Let's go ahead and put that to the side. After we take off the back shell, the next thing we're going to take off is the main chipboard. This is where the triggers are connected and the rumble packs are connected. All you have to do is basically lift up. If your Xbox 360 controller is stiff and you're having problems taking out the circuit board, what I'd recommend is sticking your finger underneath this crease right here and using that as leverage to pry up and out. You can also pry up from the sides like so. <clears throat> the, sh the chipboard, the rumble packs, the triggers, and the joysticks should all come out connected to each other. The next things we're going to disassemble are the top and bottom little uh, parts that connect the casings to each other. So you have the back casing and the front casing. Now these two connect the casings to each other. So all we have to do is lift up and it pops right out. All we have to do for the top one is lift up and it pops right out. Now we're going to take off these rubberized pieces here. Now it's got a little tab on there, but there's no screw. It's just kind of attached on there very lightly. And you're also going to do that to this one. Now we can take these buttons out. So push up on the buttons from behind and they should just kind of pop out like so. And we can put the buttons off to the side and take out the Xbox button. Oh, you can also take off the uh, clear part of the Xbox button if you wish. Okay, let's get this back and start buttons. So give them a little push and they pop out just like that. Now these are both red, so they're kind of hard to see against the uh, red controller. But there's one and here's the other one. Let's put these off to the side. All right, so now everything's taken apart except the D-pad. Now the D-pad, you'll notice, has two screws. Now these are very small screws, but the bases are very wide. So what you might want to use is a skinny screwdriver to get it started. And then once you get it started, switch to a fatter screwdriver so that you don't strip the screw on accident. Now, this is actually comprised of two pieces. There's the back piece, which is this piece, and the front piece, which is this piece. And they're actually connected together. That's why you know, they don't um, come apart, even though there's nothing really, you know, everything else kind of just drops and falls off, but the D-pad doesn't. Um, so to unscrew the D-pad, all you need to use is either a fat screwdriver or a skinny screwdriver, but I'd recommend using a fatter one so that it doesn't strip the screw on accident. Now the only problem with that is there's going to be uh, little parts that stick out and you will end up um, ripping the plastic on those, but it doesn't make any bit of difference. Um, in the long run, so don't feel bad about doing so. So we're going to simply unscrew the screws one by one. And there we go. So one screw comes out. Let's go ahead and finish off the other one. And that screw comes out as well. So now that both screws are out, <coughs> the two parts of the D-pad will separate. Now depending on what D-pad you have, it might have um, attachments on the side, it might not. All those attachments do is clip in to these little side parts. So these two main pegs will go into that will go into the hole like that. And the other two side parts will clip in. 
The clip-in parts, you don't have to worry about it. Just give it a tug and they should come apart very easily. So that's how you separate the D-pads from the little D-pad part that connects to the chipboard. This can be useful if you want to switch out the color of your D-pad. For example, if you have a gray one and you want to switch it out for a black one like I have here. All you have to do is take out this part, you don't have to worry about this.